Hello guys and today I'm going to show you the best PC build for running Cyberpunk 2077 on a budget. So without any further ado, let's get started. So Cyberpunk 2077 is all set to release hopefully now on December 10th if it doesn't get delayed again and this is a PC build if you want to play the game once it comes out but don't want to spend that much. This PC will run you around $500 to build new and will most likely run the game at 1080p with medium to high settings with good frame rates. I'll be building the PC off of the system requirements shared by CD Projekt Red and will try and work a system out of that which offers the best value right now. All the part prices will be off of the current prices on Amazon but most of the products there were exactly the same as their MSRP which is good as there will be less differences when you buy it for yourself. I'll also have all the part links in the description so you can go over and check them out for yourself as well. So now we'll start off with the parts used starting with the processor which is the AMD Ryzen 3 3200G. Ryzen has been absolutely killing it in the processor segment and this 3200G is a great APU for $100. It is a quad core processor with 4 threads and has a base clock speed of 3.6GHz and a boost clock of 4GHz. It is an AIM4 socket meaning it will work with any motherboard featuring an AIM4 socket. The CPU however only has support for 2933MHz RAM which is DDR4. The CPU also has very good integrated Vega 8 graphics and also comes with a CPU cooler in the box which gives good thermals. For the motherboard, we'll be using the SROC B450M Steel Legend motherboard. This is a mid-range micro ATX motherboard that punches way above its price range in my opinion. You get 4 RAM slots, AM4 processor support and AMD Crossfire support. The board also has a wide selection of ports including multiple USB 3 and Type-C ports. The motherboard also looks really good when compared to a lot of plain looking motherboards you get at this price range and here there is a good looking white and black ammo pattern that is clean. There is also RGB here which you don't get on budget boards and this is great for upgradability in the future as well. For the RAM here we'll be using the Corsair Vengeance LPX 16GB DDR4 RAM. The RAM will be dual channel so you'll be getting two 8GB RAM stacks which will boost performance much more than getting one single 16GB RAM stack. This RAM is 3200MHz so technically, you could get slower RAM on this as even though this is 3200, it will still run at 2933MHz due to the CPU bottleneck. 2933MHz is still very fast though and for a system like this, performance shouldn't be an issue. For the power supply, we'll be using the Ares Game 500W 80 Plus Bronze. This is a very good budget power supply with a 80 Plus Bronze rating meaning it should be safe to use and will be reliable for a long time. This is a non-modular supply though meaning all the cables will be connected to the power supply even the ones you don't need which isn't a big problem other than getting better cable management. Also, 500 watts will be more than enough for the components here and even for upgrades later in the future. For the storage, we'll be having a hard drive and SSD combo and for the hard drive, we will use a Western Digital Blue 1TB. This is probably the standard good hard drive with good value and performance for the price. The 1TB hard drive is good to have as you can store all your games and extra files there and keep everything else and windows installed on the faster SSD. Talking about the SSD, here we'll be using a Kingston 250GB NVMe SSD. This is one of the cheapest quick NVMe SSDs you can get and 250GB should be more than enough for installing windows and a few programs when the SSD is there. The main part for a gaming build is the graphics card and here we'll be having a Nvidia GeForce GTX 1650 Super. The GTX 1650 Super comes in at $150 and offers probably the best performance per dollar out of any GPU out right now. The GPU comes with 4 GB of GDDR6 memory and has a boost clock of around 1500 MHz. The output on this includes 3 DisplayPort outputs and one HDMI 2.0 which is good on a budget graphics card. This is a massive upgrade over the older GTX 1650 which only had GDDR5 memory and I have done a full video on the GTX 1650 Super's gaming performance in other games and you can check that out on the channel if you would like as well. For the case on this, we'll be using a mid-tower Aerocool Cyclone case. This is a very good budget case that is good looking, has good airflow and also has features such as RGB and a removable dust filter. It is quite easy to work in and has good cable management options. Overall, I think this is a very good PC case on a budget that I'd recommend for a build like this. So those are all the components that you will need for this PC and it'll most likely run you around $500 to build anytime recently. Performance on this PC will be very good and on a budget, it will be able to play all the games out right now and Cyberpunk 2077 with a very good experience. 
I also think this PC should be very capable of editing at 1080p and streaming some directed titles shouldn't be an issue here as well. So that's it for the video guys thanks for watching. Please like share and subscribe to the channel and I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.